Welcome to Sports Talk. Hello, everyone. Welcome. I'm Nick. I'm Mike. And I'm Jackson. From Top Notch Sports. And today we're going to be going over the Atlanta Falcons free agency frenzy. I know I might look stupid because... My mic on my laptop all of a sudden exploded. And this video is supposed to be out a few hours ago. My microphone exploded. It got way too loud and stuff. So let's hope that this works decent. Let's see what we got. So let's go right away. We're going to look at the Atlanta Falcons free agency. Let's see what we got here. Uh, Atlanta right now is negative $14 million in the hole. Negative $14 million in the hole. Um, There's a lot of things going on right now. The question is, what does this team decide to do? What are the moves that they're going to make this upcoming all season to build this team? They weren't great last year. They moved on from Dan Quinn. Uh, they, they bring in Arthur Smith. What moves do we think they're going to make? I'm going to head right down to Mike. Mike, what do you think that this team is going to do this upcoming all season? Well, looking at their uh, money situation, they're not going to do much in free agency. They're minus 14 in the hole. Uh, we did a financial video. If you guys want to go back and look at that, it might be a little bit different now, but we, we didn't see him really making any big cuts because it, honestly, this offense can compete. I think this offense can compete. The defense struggled a little bit last year. So maybe that's something you address via the draft. There's a lot of talk going on about them possibly drafting a guy like Justin Fields or Trey Lance with their draft pick, which I don't know how great a great of an idea it is. I don't think there's anything wrong with the way Matt Ryan is playing right now. I think there's other needs this team has, and I think they could be competitive with the team they have in front of them with Julio Jones, Calvin Ridley playing some of the best football in his life. They just got to get a run game. So I ta- try to attack a running back and the defensive side of the football heavy in a draft because you're not going to be able to do anything in free agency. Absolutely. Jackson, what do you think? Yeah, I 100% agree with you, Mike. I mean, this the offense is not the problem with um, with this team. Matt Ryan has been, you know, pretty good his entire career. He won an MVP back in 2016, went to the Super Bowl. We all know what happened there. Um, you got Julio Jones, um, who's arguably one of the best receivers in our generation. Calvin Ridley looked like a true number one receiver this past off se- or excuse me, this past season. And then Russell Gage ain't a bad weapon either. The only question I have with the offense is probably interior interior offensive line. Um, drafting Chris Lindstrom a couple years ago was a step in the right direction for this team, I think. Um, and maybe a running back. Maybe you want to address a running back in the draft as well. But again, the defense is the problem. Um, you got A.J. Terrell last year in the draft. Um, he's looking like he's going to be a solid future piece for you guys. I like Grady um, Jarrett on the defensive line. Deion Jones ain't bad alongside with Jose Luquan. This team's got pieces on the defensive side of the ball. They're all young. You just need to build around it. Um, like you said, they're made of $14 million in the hole. You can't really bring, like, any veterans in to help coach up these young guys. Um, they got the fourth overall pick. I could – I don't see him drafting a quarterback. I'm just going to go out and say, if they draft a quarterback, I think it's the most stupidest thing this team can do in the draft. I think they should go after a guy like Micah Parsons. And again, they have the fourth overall pick. So maybe you don't want to get Micah Parsons at the fourth Trade overall down. pick. Trade down. Trade down to a team like Denver, possibly. A team that needs a quarterback. Maybe – um Carolina wants to trade up to the fourth overall pick. Maybe you, you make a trade with San Francisco happen. There's a lot of possibilities, but if I don't think slumping a quarterback at four is the, is the move for this team. I think trading down and selecting a defensive piece is the move. Absolutely. And and here's, here's where I'm going to hop into this. This is what I think. Again, I, I do not think that they should go after a quarterback. This has been my firm stance now since I've looked at the Atlanta Falcons a few weeks ago. Uh, you look at the Atlanta Falcons, they don't have a lot of – I mean, right now, like we said, they're negative $14 million in the hole. I think this could be a team that could work their way out of the hole if they were to restructure a few contracts and maybe cut a few players. That would be interesting to see if they can get out of this out of this hole right now that they're in negative 14 million. I think that they can work their way out of it. It's still going to be tough to make signings. Again, you're going to have to free up about $24 million to be able to make some moves. So that's number one. Will they be able to get out of the hole that they're currently in? Number two is this. It's the draft. It comes to the draft, right? They got the fourth overall pick. Who do you want? And I'm going to be honest with you guys. Just to let you know, Trevor Lawrence and Zach Wilson will not be there at four. So it's either going to be someone like Fields, Wilson, I mean, Fields or, or, or uh, Lance, what were you saying, Mike? He said, and if they don't want to go to quarterback route, which I, we don't think they should do, obviously, Kyle Pitts could be a name. Yeah, Kyle Pitts could absolutely be another option. But here's what you want to look at with this Falcons team. You're at four, all right? 
let's just say you got your eyes set on. Uh, here's two guys I think that this team should absolutely have their eyes set on. I think one's Micah Parsons, and I think another one might be a cornerback, right, to pair it with A.J. Terrell. I mean, you got Patrick Sertain and Caleb Farley. Those are three guys I would target. And if those are your three guys and you're Atlanta, and those are who like, you got your eyes set on those three guys, I do not trade down past 10. Eight to Carolina, maybe if Carolina wants to trade up. If you trade down to 12, 15, you may lose your guy. If your guy is truly Micah Parsons, Patrick Sertain, and Caleb Farley, and you don't want to miss out on them, you do not trade below 10 because I'm telling you something right now. Dallas is going to want a cornerback. Uh, Denver is either going to want Parsons or another cornerback. I mean, there's a lot of teams that are going to want those three guys. So if you are Atlanta, you either pick your guy at four, and it might sound like it might be a little bit of a reek for Micah Parsons. I watched him a little bit. Uh, I was not as impressed as I think everyone's hyping him up to be. I still got to watch a lot more film on him, but he can play edge, and he can play linebacker. I, I saw more of him playing linebacker than edge, but he is versatile in that way, and that's something that Dan Quinn always liked was versatility. Dan Quinn's not there anymore. They already got Foyside, a local one. They got Deion Jones right now to free agency. They're losing out on Keanu Neal. He's going to be testing free agency. So I do think if Micah Parsons is your guy, and you want him, you don't trade down past 10. If you can't get a deal at 10, if you can't get a move, I mean, move back to having a top 10 pick, you keep your pick, you take the guy that you want, whether it's Micah Parsons, Patrick Sertain, or Caleb Farley. I'm going to say Micah Parsons is their guy. So that's the number one, their pick number one. Pick number two, again, we can't really have a lot of free agency signings here because they don't have the money. So I think in round two, this team can absolutely go after a guy like we mentioned, Javante Williams at running back. Todd Gurley, that was a failure. Uh, they're going to need a running back. Mike, go ahead. What were you going to say? If you look at what Arthur Smith has done, he's a run first, and then he'll beat you with the play-action pass. That's what he did in Tennessee. That's probably what he's going to want to do here. And I think it does nothing but benefit Matt Ryan, but you need to have a good running back to be able to do this. So it would make sense for them to attack one in the second round of this draft or try to make a move for a guy that maybe won't be signing long-term someplace else. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, look, Arthur Smith, and I'm going to say this too, Matt Ryan, everyone wants to get rid of Matt Ryan because he's getting old. Matt Ryan played phenomenal last year for having absolutely no run game. I mean, he looked really, really good. They got great receivers. I think that you just got to build up that thing off his line. And one thing you don't want to do, and this is what I was telling the Jackson the other day, you draft a quarterback at the number four overall pick. He has to sit behind Ryan for probably the next year or two. I mean, Matt Ryan is playing good. Okay, and bringing Arthur Smith, I think, is only going to help him. But if you draft a quarterback, okay, and the prime years of a quarterback not being the best of their ability, but because they're on a team-friendly contract is the first four years. And you don't want to bring in a kid like uh, Trey Lance or a Justin Fields who's going to sit down two years. And then you only got two years to make that strong push to the playoffs or the Super Bowl on a rookie deal, and then guess what? Then you got to pay this guy big bucks. And guess what? You don't get a chance to build your team. That's why I am a big advocate, a huge advocate of building a team around the quarterback first. Once you build that team, once you build that offensive line and that defense, then you insert your quarterback, and then you got four to five years to win a Super Bowl with that guy before he takes this huge contract. If you bring him in too early, they do not have enough money to build a team around them. Look at Sam Darnold, most NFL-ready quarterback, went into the least NFL-ready team in the New York Jets, never panned out. And, I mean, that's what happens when you go to a team like that without a coach and without a team. One last thing, I think in the third round that you guys should attack, a safety in Richie Grant. This guy is a true free safety. He's a ball-hawking guy. In the third round, he's been going up, flying up draft boards. If he's still there for you guys, which I think he could be, he would be a really nice piece. So imagine this. You got A.J. Terrell on one side. You got maybe – uh, right now, we don't really know what you're going to do at your other cornerback position. I know a lot of you guys have been saying you guys want Malcolm Butler. There's been a lot of comments on the Malcolm Butler release video that they want to get Malcolm Butler. They can free up cap space. Maybe they can do that or restructure a few contracts. You got Micah Parsons playing linebacker and edge for you guys. And then you got Richie Grant in the backfield. I mean, at safety. And then you also got Matt Ryan, Javante Williams, Julio Jones, Calvin Ridley, Hayden Hurst, and Russell Gage. Look, I think this seems pretty good. You still got to address the interior lineman position, maybe another edge rusher and the cornerback. But that's all I got. Mike Jackson, anything else you guys want to say? No, I think this team just seriously needs to focus on defense and getting themselves a running back. They need a good runner to football here in Atlanta. Haven't had that in a long time. That's what Arthur Smith needs to have success in this system. I think so. Jackson, anything? Yeah, I agree with you, Mike. I mean, you look, Arthur Smith was the offensive coordinator for Tennessee. What did Tennessee do? They just pounded, pounded the rock. Matt Ryan's a tremendous throw with the football already. You develop a run game. I mean, he's only going to get better. 
And then you look look at Micah Parsons and Richie. Everyone they draft, like we have you guys mocked in here, they're going to instantly come in and make an impact. I mean, Micah Parsons is going to start. Richie Grant's going to start. Um, Javante Williams from North Carolina is going to start. So you guys you guys are in a good spot, I think. You know, you're sitting at the number four overall pick. If you guys do decide to trade down, you I mean, that number four overall pick for a team that wants a, um, a quarterback, I mean, it's going to be very valuable. So you can probably get a, a good haul in for that number four overall pick. Um, we'll have to wait and see what happens. You guys got a new head coach in Arthur Smith. Um, he ran a pretty good ship over there in Tennessee. We'll see what happens when he comes over to Atlanta. Got high hopes for you guys. Absolutely. Final thing to wrap this up, I think you guys got to build around that quarterback, that future quarterback. Build around Matt Ryan right now. Build, build, build. Build that damn foundation for the future. Offense and defense. And then when it's time... You take out Matt Ryan, you plug in the new kid. He has four years, five years to prove himself to put, make a push to the Super Bowl. If you insert a quarterback right now, it will not be good because then you have to pay him. And this team's not going to win anything. And only, I mean, if you get him now, Matt Ryan's there for another year or two. Then the guy gets plugged in and he has to win a Super Bowl in like two, three years, even make a playoff push. Then he gets a big deal and then you got no money to spend around him. You can't do that. And I don't think if Zach Wilson and Trevor Lawrence on the board are not on the board, I think you're stupid to draft a quarterback. There's nobody else deserving to be drafted at number four. That's all, guys. We'll see you guys soon. Peace. We are. Go better. See you guys soon. Peace.